Hey, Eric, I just got home. It doesn't look like you're here. Did you go out somewhere? Oh, I'm out having pizza with my mom. This restaurant's the bomb. This is some of the best diddly darn doggone pizza I've ever had. Hang on, what? You went to eat just the two of you? Duh. You working? What are we supposed to do? Just sit around twiddling our thumbs till you get off? It would have been too late if we sat around waiting at home for you. I get that, but still. Hang on a sec. I think my mom's mad at you. What? Why did I do something wrong? You crashed into another car while you were out driving last week, didn't you? The repair cost came to almost $1,000. I just told her all about it. She almost spat her wine out all over the table. She flipped out and called you a careless moron. I didn't crash into anyone. The guy crashed into me because he was on his phone while he was driving. No way. I bet you weren't paying attention. I can't risk letting you drive the car again after this. You're dangerous. I'm sorry. You always were a scatterbrain. I lost count of how many cups and plates you've smashed. It's like breaking stuff is a hobby of yours. I really don't think I break as much stuff as you're saying I do. I always tell my mom about your careless episodes. Every time, without fail, she lets out the biggest sigh and says, Wow, she did it again? She told me earlier she wishes I married a woman who didn't have two left feet. Why'd you gotta go be so clumsy, babe? I'd really appreciate it if you didn't badmouth me to your mom. Every time we meet, she preaches to me about something or other. You need to pay more attention to this, or you need to stop doing that. It's so tiresome. So? A little instruction never did anyone any harm. In fact, I think it could be just what you need. Instead of complaining, you should see it as an opportunity to focus your energies on learning something new. My mom has been around a lot longer than you, and she knows a thing or two about the world. But I can tell she hates me and thinks I'm a failure as a wife. I don't think you're helping matters constantly filling her head with unflattering stories about me. But she's not wrong. You are a failure of a wife. Forget it. I'm done with this conversation. When will you be getting home from your meal? Mom will probably start getting tired soon, so I should be back by 10 p.m. You better make damn sure that I have a bathtub full of hot water waiting for me when I get home. I want to take a nice, relaxing soak to take the edge off of the stress of being married to you. Fine. Hey, guess what? My mom says she's got a thing or two to teach you next time you guys see each other. Prepare for the lecture of a lifetime. She says she's going to undo the mess your parents made and re-educate you. This should be good. I can't wait. <laughs> wow, Eric, can you not act like all of this is a joke? Your mother's constant preaching is driving me crazy. What's going on, Ann? Why are you so late home today? You're usually back home before 7. Sorry, I'll be back at 10. Excuse me? 10 minutes? Quit dilly-dallying and get a move on, woman. Where's my dinner? I said I'll be home soon. I bought you a spaghetti bolognese ready meal. I'll have it ready almost immediately after I get back. How suspicious. What is? You. You never come home this late. Something fishy's going on here. I don't like this one bit. You're up to something, aren't you? I know a rat when I smell one. Are you cheating on me? No way. Why are you home so late? Then explain. Well, Eric, it's ten minutes. Is there really all this need for drama? If I was cheating on you, I'd be home a lot later than this. Anyway, it's your fault I'm home late today to begin with. Huh? How so? What does that have to do with me? You're the one who told me to grab you a burger from the burger van by the station. There was a big old queue, so I spent ten minutes waiting in line. I went out of my way to go to the station after work instead of coming straight home because you wanted a burger. I wanted a burger? Huh? Did I? The only reason I went is because you said you couldn't stop thinking about big juicy hamburgers. Don't you think accusing me of cheating when I'm going out of my way to do something for you is a little horrible? Hmm, I'm trying to remember. Nope, I never said I wanted no burger. You're lying. I don't have the faintest recollection. Yes, you did. You shut your goddamn lying mouth. Do not blame me for your laziness. I bet you dawdled the entire way home doing dumb woman shit like looking at handbags and shop windows. Eric, are you drunk? You've been drinking, haven't you? I can tell. I can always tell. You're always so forgetful when alcohol's involved. So what if I want to enjoy a freaking beer after work? That a crime? God, I'm not even drunk at all. I can handle my drink perfectly well. I knew it. There is nothing wrong with having a beer before dinner, you goddamn Puritan. I was bound to want something with you. Making me wait so long to eat? I'm begging you, Eric. Please don't overdo it this time. Will you just leave it at one beer for me, please? You don't know how much damage this stuff has done to your body. Your doctor told you to stop altogether, remember? Are you sure it's really a good idea to be drinking again? There's no problem. As long as I don't drink too much, 
What is it? You think I'm not capable of controlling my alcohol intake? Ah, stop patronizing me already. But are you really? Isn't the reason your scans are coming back showing liver damage precisely because you're not capable of controlling your intake? God damn it, woman. Button it already. Forget this crap. Hurry up and come home and make my dinner. I'll be checking your phone when you get back. Why? Well, I need to find out whether you've been cheating on me. Jesus Christ, Eric, will you stop this? I told you I'm not cheating on you. I'm sure you're probably not, but I gotta check just in case. You can never let your guard down around a woman. Anne, are you there? It's me, Natalie, your husband's mother. Why aren't you answering your phone? Where are you right now? Sorry, Natalie, I had my phone on silent. I'm out shopping. You're what? Do you seriously think this is the time to be out shopping? Your husband collapsed. Hurry and get your ass to the hospital. You need to get over here and listen to what the doctors have to say right this instant. Nope, I can't be bothered. You can't be bothered? Your husband's in the midst of a serious health emergency and you can't be bothered? Oh my god, you're pure evil. Do you have any idea how serious this is? Yep, let me guess. He collapsed and got taken to the hospital in an ambulance, right? We've been through this routine more times than I can count. If you know, then why the hell aren't you here by his side? Hurry up and get to the hospital. He got blind drunk again, didn't he? Maybe if he didn't ignore the doctor's repeated warnings to stop drinking, then he wouldn't be collapsing and getting rushed to the hospital like this. Surely you can see he only has himself to blame. Wait, what? Drinking? Has he started drinking again? I thought he was clean. He'd been going to those Alcoholics Anonymous meetings and everything. I guess he didn't tell you. Come to think of it, why would he? He always did like to play the model son whenever you were around. He got one of the worst mother complexes I've ever seen. It's actually gross. Don't you speak about my son that way. How dare you speak ill of him when he's laid up in a hospital bed? Even if he is drinking again, there's no justifying your behavior. I'll speak ill of him as I damn well like. Let's face it, with the way he acts, he makes it impossible to say anything nice about him. What the hell happened between you two? How can you be this cold to him? He's your husband. I couldn't care less what happens to him now. They say what goes around comes around. This is him just getting what he deserves. Stop it. Anyone would think you'd be worried about your husband being rushed away in an ambulance. But no, far from it. You're actually insulting him while he's lying in a hospital bed, unable to defend himself. That poor thing. You are the most horrible wife there ever was. You know what? I've had it. This ends here. If you hate my son's guts that much, then get a damn divorce. If he wants a divorce, then I'll be more than happy to go along with it. Something tells me he's not going to be so forthcoming, though. What makes you think that? He probably can't wait to see the back of you if this is what you think of him. By the sound of it, your marriage has been dead in the water for some time now. He does nothing but badmouth you whenever we see each other. Ah, uh, of course. How could I forget the hateful stories he tells you about me behind my back? There's just one problem. They're almost all lies. He tries to turn everyone against me, so I end up isolated and alone. The moment I make the slightest mistake, he's off blabbing about it in the most exaggerated way possible to anyone who will listen. What are you talking about? That doesn't make any sense. Why on earth would he want to do that? Like I said, he's trying to isolate me. How tiresome, will you? Gah, how tiresome. Will you let me know when you're ready to stop talking nonsense? I don't have the strength for this right now. It's almost like you're trying to say my Eric is a bad person. Bingo. That's exactly what he said. <laughs> you don't know his true colors because he's always wearing a mask around you. You think he's Mr. Perfect. But in the truth, with me, he's the most domineering, tyrannical control freak you could possibly imagine. He does nothing but complain about the state of the house, despite never lifting a finger to help out with the housework. When he drinks, he's a million times worse. He shouts at me, throws things at me, he even hits me. Oh, I kept this quiet until now, but he's also unemployed. What? Lies. My Eric works at his a top executive at a major global company. Or at least that's what he's told me. Of course he did. That's a lie too. He quit that company last year. Now instead of working for himself, he takes my entire salary every time I get paid, which means I can't even afford to eat properly these days. Lies. Nonsense! Madness! My boy Eric would never treat anyone so inhumanely. Least of all his own wife. I don't believe you for a second. Fine. If you're intent on burying your head in the sand, I'll just have to show you proof. Proof? Are you free to meet me now? If you are, come over to our house ASAP. 
It's time you learn the truth about your son. Mom, can you believe this visit has just ended? But Anne was nowhere near to be seen. My wife, my very own wife, doesn't even want to visit me in the hospital. What the hell's going on with her lately? I mean, let's face it. We already knew she was an object of failure of a wife, but this just takes the biscuit. How does she even sleep at night? Will you tell her off for me, Mom? Did you speak to the doctors yet, Eric? Did they explain to you what's wrong with you and why you ended up in the hospital? Nope. Not one of them knows what's wrong with me. It's a mystery. <laughs> if I had a guess, I'd say I'd probably got food poisoning from my stupid pea brain moron of a wife's cooking. Her cooking is so bad. I think I'd rather eat my own vomit. You should taste the stuff she calls soup. That stuff would put anybody in the hospital. Damn. What did I do to deserve this? Imagine being hospitalized by my own wife's cooking. <laughs> it's actually comical when you think about how ridiculous it is. I must be the unluckiest guy in the world. Eric, you will apologize to Anne at once. Huh? Why? Stop blaming her for things that aren't her fault. You were in that hospital bed because you started drinking again, didn't you? You ignored the doctor's warnings and got so drunk you could barely form a sentence. Huh? What? What the heck are you talking about, Mom? All that stuff's behind me. I'm clean now. I haven't been near the bottle in years. Believe me, I take the doctor's warning very seriously. Is that so? I'll tell you what. I'll go and talk to the doctor and find out for myself. Let's ask him directly and find out exactly why it is that you're lying in that hospital bed. No, Mom, don't do it. He's been saving lives. The last thing he needs is you bugging him. Besides, he's only allowed to talk about his patients with their families. I'm your mother, you idiot. Obviously, he'll tell me. What the heck is with you, Mom? I already had a long chat with the doc about my situation. You shouldn't be bugging him anyway. He's a busy guy. Why wouldn't you believe me? You seem different. What's going on? Normally, I'd believe everywhere you said without so much as a hint of doubt. But I'm done blindly accepting whatever you tell me. What's gotten into you all of a sudden? Did something happen? Is the stress of me being in a hospital making you go kooky? Look, I get this can't be easy on you. But that's no excuse to be giving me a hard time. Don't patronize me, Eric. I met up with Anne. She's with me now, actually. You're together? If you're with her, tell her to hurry up and visit me in the hospital. This is no way for her to be treating her husband. I won't be telling her that. Why not? I saw what you did, Eric. Saw what? What were all those bruises on Anne's body? I'd never seen anything like it. What have you been doing to this poor girl? Huh? That's not all. She showed me your bank statements, too. You've been spending money like it grows on trees, despite not getting paid a salary for months and months. When did you stop working for Peeps Logistics? And why didn't you tell me that you were unemployed? Have you been lying to me about everything this whole time? Well, no. I, uh, the, uh, uh, I just, so it was like, uh, no, I didn't lie to you, Mom. You've been making Anne work like a dog to provide you with money to blow on frivolous junk and beer while lazing around at home, not lifting a finger this whole time, haven't you? Every time I saw you, you'd go on and on about how sick to death you were of her. You practically called her every name under the sun. But the truth is, you were in no position to be criticizing anyone, were you? Mom, please, you have to hear me out. First of all, about those bruises on Anne's body? Before you go off jump into these crazy conclusions, there's a perfectly reasonable explanation as to how she got them. You see, she's always been really clumsy. She has this stupid habit of bumping into things around the house. You know, desks, doors, cupboards, drawers, that kind of thing. Surely I don't need to tell you how careless she can be. Remember all those stories I told you about her doing dumb stuff? She has bruises all over her body, Eric. Even on her back. You can't seriously be telling me she got these from bumping into a table. These aren't from bumping into things. I couldn't stop crying when she showed me what you'd done to her. Chill out, Mom. It's fine. Dry your tears. There ain't nothing to cry about. Anne wants out. And you're going to go along with a divorce without so much as a complaint. Do you hear me, boy? Do you understand what the implications would be if you refused to give her what she wants? You wouldn't have a leg to stand on if she took you to court over domestic violence. You wouldn't even be able to afford the compensation because you don't have a job. You're going to do the right thing and accept the divorce before it comes to that. Jeez, Mom. Where the heck is this all coming from all of a sudden? I'm not divorcing Anne. She's my wife. 
Yes, you are, Eric. If you had any sense about you, you'd do exactly what mom is telling you to do. I can't tell you how excited I am about getting away from you and never looking back. Thankfully, I was able to get out of the house without worrying about upsetting you and facing more of your beatings because you're in the hospital. Anne, is that you? Your mom's helping me get my things together as we speak. Forget all the crap about court and compensation. I don't have the energy for it. Just sign the divorce papers and let's be done with it. We ain't getting no heckin' divorce. Stop being so selfish, damn it. My mind's made up and my will is firm. I'm leaving. I never want to see your face again for as long as I live. What brought on this all of a sudden, babe? Did I do something to upset you? I thought it was weird when you didn't visit me at the hospital, but... But now this? All of the sudden? Are you being serious? I have wanted out for months now. This is my golden opportunity. Golden opportunity? I collapsed and got rushed into the hospital in an ambulance and you're calling it a golden opportunity? You're sick. I knew it was now or never, Eric. There's no way I was about to let this chance go to waste. I have no intention of playing the doting wife by your deathbed. I wouldn't visit you if there was a gun to my head. I'm using this opportunity to get away from you while I still can. What'd you just say? My deathbed? You seem to be under the impression that I haven't been to the hospital, but I was there earlier today. You came? When? While you were asleep this morning, the doctor explained your situation to me. He said your liver and pancreas are barely functioning anymore. I was shocked, but I can't say I was surprised. Let's face it, no one's carrying on drinking as much as you do forever. Right? I wanted to talk to you about this when you visited, but you never came. You know about the future. I have no intention of being a part of your life. As your health deteriorates while you fight your self-inflicted illness, nor do I have the obligation to look after you. I'm sick of being your doormat and punching bag, and it ends now. Anne, no, please, wait. You're my wife, baby. We're married. It's times like this when we have to be there to support each other more than ever. Wow, you're something else. You can't seriously say that you thought I'd stand by your side after everything you did to me. The only reason I didn't do this months ago is because I felt trapped and afraid. You treated me like less than dirt on your shoe. You made me feel worthless. I wanted to kill myself, Eric. What do you think, I'm suddenly going to fall apart and start playing the loyal wife just because you found out that you don't have much time left? I never meant to hurt you, baby. What? Even though you hit me and abuse me on a daily basis, how could you want to do anything other than hurt me? Not only that, but you went back out of your way to spread vicious lies about me behind my back to practically everyone we knew. In a way, I think the emotional abuse actually hurt worse than the beatings. What even was I to you? Some tool to take your frustrations out on? I love you, baby. The only reason I told everyone all those things about you is because I wanted to keep you all to myself. I thought that if I could isolate you from your friends and family, I could make you so completely and utterly dependent on me that you'd never be able to leave me, and I can have you all to myself forever. What? It was just my own special way of showing my feelings for you. I did it because I love you, Anne. You have some serious psychological issues. If you're going to come up with excuses, at least come up with some more convincing bullshit than that. You disgust me. It's true what the doctors say. I might not have long left, but I at least want to spend what little time I have left on this earth with you, babe. Will you stay by my side until the end? Absolutely not. I wouldn't stay by your side if you paid me a million dollars. In fact, I won't be wasting another second of my life with you. If you're going to kick the bucket, I hope you feel nothing but crushing loneliness and regret over what you did to me in your final moments. I'm so sorry I couldn't bring myself to be honest with you all this time. Truth is... I've always struggled to be honest when I have strong feelings for someone. I was mean to all my exes, too. It kind of became like this bad habit I brought with me into adulthood. I'm not perfect, Anne. I know that. I'm sorry I was horrible to you. You never deserved any of it, babe. I'm sorry for how much I hurt you. Oh, look. There goes the responsibility. Dodging again. This is one of the reasons I find you so disgusting. I might let you off the hook if you were a five-year-old child. But listening to a fully grown man use communication problems as an excuse to try and justify a vicious campaign of physical and emotional abuse makes me shudder. If you want someone to be there for you when you kick the bucket, I suggest you ask your mom. I'll be forgetting all about you and getting started on building my new life. How am I supposed to fight this illness without you here by my side? Where am I supposed to find strength without my sugar dumpling cheering me from the sidelines? I'm not your sugar dumpling anymore, Eric. I haven't been for a long time. Judging on how panicked you are, I'm guessing you don't have long left at all. What are we talking about? Weeks? Days? I guess at least that means you won't be a burden on your mom for very long. Let's face it, no one wants to visit you, do they? And do you really mean it? Are you really going to abandon me? Are you really going to abandon me while I'm terminally ill? You're welcome to hate me. But believe me, you couldn't possibly hate me more than I already hate you. 
How about you spend your final moments bad-mouthing me to your mom, just like the good old days? Maybe that'll take your mind off of things. <laughs> I can't promise she'll listen quietly and blindly accept everything you tell her like she used to, though. If anything, you'll be the one keeping your mouth shut while she lectures you on what a good-for-nothing lowlife of a husband you are. With that, I moved out of the house. Me and Eric have been staying together and took a flight down to Arizona to stay with my sister. I probably didn't have to go so far, but I wanted to make it as hard as possible for my terminally ill ex-husband to track me down. Natalie became a fixture of her son's bedside determined to be there for him for the little time he had left, in spite of everything he'd done to me. I don't hold it against her. She's still his mom. And there's nothing stronger than a mother's love. But even the constant presence of his mom didn't help make up for his loneliness. Because apparently he did nothing but cry out my name as he drifted in and out of consciousness. Needless to say, I didn't visit him even once. I also ignored all of his messages and eventually decided to block him when I realized he was never going to take the hint. I heard from his mom a year later that he finally passed away. Apparently, he went quietly asleep in his hospital bed while his mom was picking up supplies for him. In the end, he died alone. Not long after that, to my surprise, Natalie sent me his life insurance payout. She said she knew it could never undo what had been done. But she told me to think of it as compensation for the hell he'd subjected me to for so long. I got the impression she felt a degree of responsibility for her son's actions and wanted to do whatever she could to make up for it. I always thought Natalie had it in for me, but I realized now it was only because Eric was doing his utmost to make sure we hate each other. I see her in a totally different light now. It turns out she wasn't so bad after all. We're both ready to move on and put the past behind us. Now it's time for me and her to forget about each other and focus on living our own lives. Here's to the future.